Testing, one, two. This is the Mr. Nobody Podcast. Season three, episode six. I have a primal fear. It goes something like this. I'm in a compound with a group of people that I I love. Family group. An extended family. And the marauders are coming. And I know it's true. There's nothing I can do about it. As a mini culture or society or group, we haven't prepared for that. sacred art of metallurgy and went to the dark side and made pointed sticks out of metal. This sense of being helpless or realizing too late the grave danger that I was in all the time and not just myself but all the people I care about that I love everything we created everything we built the marauders are coming they're going to take it all and burn the rest. People, animals, possessions. For my more formal educational work, I have been reading this book, The Chalice and the Blade, by Rianne Eisler. It essentially describes two models of existence. One is cooperative. female goddess, the mother goddess, the earth goddess was worshipped, the nurturing, caring development of a society, a family, an individual. out of 
your control. So I have been searching for clarity as to why I have been so fascinated and invested in fighting combat jujitsu and fighting. For me, I'm just lucky that I'm still able to do it and have found an amazing teacher and group of people. And my son is there training with me. son. Nothing I could do. I wasn't prepared. Come to me, my melancholy baby. Cuddle up and don't be blue. All your fears are foolish fancy, baby. Don't you know that I'm in love with you? Every cloud must have a silver lining. Wait until the sun comes through. Smile, my honey dear, as I kiss away each day. Or else I will be melancholy too. Warning, I'm going to be subjecting you to a few jazz standards where I'll play and sing just because that's what I've been spending some of my time doing. I've been studying shamanism and mixed martial arts. For me, they're connected because they're about states of consciousness, enduring difficulty, and informing yourself with truth, not just doing things to feel good. Truthful. What good are your defenses if they won't work? Your ramparts, your walls, your thought process, your ideologies, your religions. What good is anything if it doesn't work, if it isn't true? And even if it is true, sometimes that's not enough to protect you from the marauders. Operating on a another dimensional track. Or maybe I'm wrong about that. Maybe one creates the other, although I can't imagine how. Just by virtue of existence, it's kind of categorical. I think I'm fascinated by self-protection and being able to hold space for other people who need that. Because I was powerless in a... a bunch of years in my childhood. Again, the dominating father, my father. He was large and mean. And a priest. And not just a priest, but the head of his religion. He also couldn't control himself. He would have bursts 
rage. And worse, he took out his sexual drives on us kids. Again, in various ways. My mother went to work really early and he would cook breakfast for myself and four siblings. And I don't know if he did it on purpose, but he would not finish cooking the food and then force us to eat it. And it would be one thing if it happened once or ten times, but it was basically every time. These memories come up in me and I'm angry. These strong memories created me. There was a few times I lost my temper with my kids and I saw myself. I saw him, I saw me, I saw his father and father and father, and who knows, mother. I don't know who to blame or praise, but there does seem to be a good that isn't about causing pain, killing people. And yet, pain is necessary for growth. But the marauders, it's just because they're stronger and they're willing to hurt people. In that book, The Chalice and the Blade, when the dominating cultures took over and became personifications of the sun, male gods, females became relegated to concubines and and then human mortals. And then not equal. And as much as I think I read, I just didn't know that there were thousands of years where societies existed that did not use that template. And that we can ascertain that through the Paleolithic and Neolithic records of burials and cave paintings and other material artifacts. But war has been with us a long time. I just saw that there was a 5,000 year old battleground uncovered in Spain, just my ancestral home. It's probably never been very cool for very long anywhere, unless you were on an island like Crete. Take a look at the artwork from Crete where there's no war. Men and women are equal. It's because it's an island. I'm not sure, but I think they had tall cliffs. It was not easy to invade. That's 
So they were like, fuck it, let's have an amazingly awesome society. How much do I love you? I'll tell you no How deep is the ocean? How high is the sky? How many times in a day? I've heard that the only kind of hypnosis is self-hypnosis. And I have also heard that the only kind of discipline is self-discipline. Hmm. I think they're related. That we hypnotize ourselves into a dream world. We think it's this. And we don't have an easy way to step out, a sacrament, a passageway like the shamans. They go up the pole, they slip out the very top of the umbrella. Light. When I play the guitar, I let my son just travel through me. this is about it transcends myself my son our story but it's the emotion the pure emotion Consciousness that it evokes in me. I was born when he died. It's like a second half of my life. Though I'm, you know, assuming too much there. But one thing that did change is I'm I'm able to make aesthetic decisions about my life. I want to play the guitar. I want to let my body sing and feel the deep triple entendre of poetry. I want to dream. Protect yourself. I saw my son in a dream. I walked behind this house and he was there laughing with a friend. And he had a little pipe in his hand. And I said, hey. And he said, hey, Dad. 
and he put the pipe to my lips. are just where the mastery is, where the joy I've been yelled at so much during my retraining as a martial artist. I just had so many bad habits, still have bad habits that unweaving my history, my body history, it's been interesting and something worth living for. And that's what I've been learning, to just live for something, something beautiful something that beautifies the world, not something that just pushes a pointy stick into it. terrifying it goes like this I'm in the middle of a forest and I know that because I see at my feet which are these moccasin boots crush leaves and I look forward at my arms and hands and I'm holding a very long see marks markings and right then I noticed somebody right next to me another man younger afraid and he an order a shout a command is shouted and we all jam our shields into the ground as we kneel I notice at the bottom of my shield there's a rectangular slit that even has like metal that's laminating it. It's meant to be there. And as I'm looking at that and going, hey, what's that for? This huge violence of explosion, of force comes. And the last thing I see is 
the earth pushed through that rectangular slit in my shield and I wake up. I perceive the entire environment, a row of soldiers, some unknown history or place, and maybe I'll look for those oblong shields, those very specific, just like my son and the shirt he was wearing. Mr. Nobody, out.